2011 NFL Draft Recap right now. This is IB Sports. I'm BJ Griffin. 2011 NFL Draft Recap. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing this, this Falcons jersey. That's what, that's what we do as fans. We sit down and we watch the NFL Draft and see what our teams do. So I think you guys know where this is going and where this is going to start. I, pro I swear this will not be the 2011 NFL Draft Falcons recap. But I got to talk about it. The Falcons trade up with the Cleveland Browns to get the sixth round pick or to get the sixth pick overall. They trade a bunch of draft picks, one draft pick from, from the 2012 draft and two from the 2011 draft. And so, so when they're doing this, I'm like, okay, who are we going to get? How are we going to beef up that defense? And the Falcons, they pick up Julio Jones from Alabama, the, the wide receiver. And initially when I see this pick, I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's actually a good fit as far as an offensive player because Julio Jones... He's, he's very physical, he's a great run blocker, and he has solid hands. I mean, that's a, that's a legitimate pick if you're looking to pick up another receiver. And while Michael Jenkins was improved over last season, I, I really think Julio Jones would be a better fit to be that guy to, to be across from on the other side of Roddy White catching catching balls from, from Matt Ryan. So I, I'm not totally disappointed with the pick, but we, we most certainly did. To give up all that, for a wide receiver, I don't necessarily understand the move. Now, let me tell you who who I would have liked for the Falcons to pick up. I really would have liked if the Falcons got Nick Fairley, and of course, he's very physical. And that was this is actually a theme they should have took note from the other teams in, in the draft. The record twelve defensive linemen were picked up in the draft. And let me tell you how I look at this. The coaches and organizations are picking up defensive linemen in the first round because they're starting to realize that the defensive lineman position, specifically the defensive tackle position, translate translates the most immediate, most immediately to the to the NFL at as success. If you're a beast in college, a defensive tackle, then you more than likely you can be a, a beast in the NFL your your rookie season at defensive tackle. Look at Indomitian Sue. For for the Detroit Lions, look at Glenn Dorsey for the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, these these guys are, are beasts, and they were beasts in college. They were projected to be beasts, and they and they had an immediate impact on the team. And with that being said, of course, the Lions picked up Nick Fairley, and with Sue and Fairley there, that's that's going to be crazy. I don't know how teams are going to stop that, but that's why the Lions did it because you have an almost guaranteed playmaker on your on your defensive line if you pick up a defensive tackle specifically and the, these coaches in the organizations they're starting to realize that and they are picking these guys up because these guys come in immediately and they're and, and they're beast so Namdi Asamoa for the Raiders is a free agent this season and what I want if I'm hoping the Falcons you know I hope that's their little uh trick up the sleeve They're like ah you thought we weren't going to try and beef up that defense this season yeah I'm, I'm really hoping they they make a big push to get Nnamdi Asamoah because in my opinion Nnamdi Asamoah is the best cornerback in the NFL and Brent Grimes while, while our secondary was was terrible you know note the Green Bay Packers playoff game even though a lot of people got ate up like that by Green Bay but you know they, they dropped like 44 points on us so but while while we do have you know some playmakers on that in that secondary, mainly Brent Grimes, who's actually a Pro Bowler this this last season, to have a Dom Kasut there, to, Dom Kasut, excuse me, Nnamdi Asamoa there, and to have him be that that leadership, take that leadership role for the secondary and just that defense in general, he could really make things happen for the Falcons on defense. Those are the kind of guys we need to we need to be. Picking up, but anyway, on to on to the, the the main stuff with the NFL draft. Of course, Cam Newton picked number one overall to the Carolina Panthers. Feel like the Carolina Panthers could have could have could have made a better move. They they had more more pressing issues to fill, mainly on their defense. But I, I'm not. I'm in no way am I hating on Cam Newton. I think Cam Newton has the potential to be a uh, a star in the in the NFL, even if he doesn't 
become that right away. But I just don't see why. I mean, they already, Carolina already picked up Jimmy Clausen in the first round last NFL draft. So I don't see why you would pick up a quarterback again. I mean, some some people, when they have that first round pick, they come with the philosophy of, okay, we have a first round pick. I'm going to pick up the best player available. And I just, I mean, I, I don't see where the logic is because if you don't need that position, why would you? But, I mean... Maybe Cam Newton go, goes there and he does does big things for for Carolina. You know, God knows they they need somebody to <laughs> step up in that quarterback position and play well for for Carolina. So that's the number one pick. Bengals pick up AJ Green more than likely. Ocho Cinco will will be out of there. And not and, and previously I've heard T.O. say that he won't play for the Bengals next season more than likely, but you know, that, that may have changed and correct me on that if I'm wrong. And Carson Palmer says if he doesn't get traded that before the season that he will retire. So smart move by the Bengals pick up AJ Green. They really need to build back up that explosiveness on their offense because they're losing their their biggest guys and their biggest playmakers. So, you know, continuing on, the Saints trade with the Patriots to get the the twenty eighth pick in the first round and the Saints pick up Mark Ingram. Good pick. Reggie Bush wasn't the, the biggest fan of the pick. He kind of saw it as, okay, they picked up Mark Ingram, so they must be done with me. And Reggie Bush, he tweeted, it's been fun, New Orleans. So it doesn't seem like he is sour, but he just kind of knows, okay, it, it looks like they're done with me. And if he isn't, if he is done with New Orleans, and if he doesn't play for New Orleans next season, there are a lot of teams that could use a Reggie Bush and guys are a lot of teams are going to go after him too like straight up I don't see why I mean he's a he's a great player I mean he's not a he's not a starting running back he's not a number one guy he's, he's just not and he I mean he's, he's a role player he is a he can't run up the middle he is a outside running pass catching route running kind of guy I mean he's just He's he's not gonna get you those tough yards and he's not gonna start a running back the, the whole game. He's just he's just not and that's not a bad thing and that's not downing his skill set because he's just not built like that and these kind of uh let me call them hybrid kind of players are really they're getting a lot bigger in the in the NFL because with these schemes getting a lot more these offensive schemes that these coaching that these coaching organizations or let me say the coaching staffs are are forming are getting way more complex and they really favor these guys that can be plugged in anywhere and Reggie Bush he can be plugged in anywhere the backfield the slot he can be spread out wide you can put Reggie Bush anywhere and he can make plays for you can run back kicks I mean this guy he can he can do everything you need him to do offensively and Reggie Bush I mean he's a he's a big pickup for anybody he really he was real good for the for the Saints uh, well, I guess he's not gone yet, but you know he's so far he's been real good for the Saints. So second round, the red uh, for the ninth pick in the second round, the Redskins pick up Jarvis Jenkins, and he you know saw a legitimate defensive tackle again to keep with the theme of defensive tackle. All these guys picking up these defensive tackles, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that a little more in a second, but. You know the Redskins. They could definitely lose. They could definitely use that. That the more power at defensive line as a lot of teams are are, are trying to get. He'll he'll certainly be a much better plug in than Albert Hainsworth was when they <laughs> when they uh, traded for him. So that you know that's a that's a good look for the Redskins. And let me make another point about these uh, defensive tackles being being picked up uh, or these defensive linemen. Excuse me. It's not not only do they do they translate immediately from from college but you have when you were talking about defensive ends you have a couple guys that are that are hybrid like they can play defensive end and they can play outside line outside linebacker also like they have size and they're great pass rushers I mean again these defensive and offensive schemes that these co that these coaching staffs are making they really favor these hybrid players to to be to to, to shine to be put placed anywhere and you know, pretty soon. I mean, who's to say Reggie Bush couldn't be a star? Even though he, I mean, and of course, I'm going offense instead of defense. I know I was talking about a defensive line, but who's to say Reggie Bush couldn't be a star without starting at the running back position? I mean, potentially he could get he could be 
put into more plays than some of the stars because he can do he can do everything. He can catch, he can run, he can well everything except for running inside, which is which is the problem. But you know who's to say these hybrid players are going to turn out to be superstars? So let me know. I know I can't I can't cover everything in the NFL draft because it's so much. I know you guys have your own teams. Let me know what you think about the moves your teams have made and the team and the moves you want your teams to make in the future. Well, in this off season before the NFL regular season starts. Make sure to subscribe. Follow us on Twitter. Make sure to download the podcast. Also, we are on iTunes now. This is Ivy Sports. I'm BJ Griffin, and I'm signing off.